Hi guys, Nexi here, back with another video and today we're gonna review and compare these two 3D printers. This is a Creality CR6SE and this is a Creality N3 Max. Let's see which of these 3D printers is a better choice. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys and thanks for tuning in. So we have a two 3D printers in a similar price range. At this moment, the N3 Max costs 329 and the Sierra 6 SE costs 399 US dollars. So the smaller, more expensive, or the larger but less expensive, which one to choose? Let's start first with the Sierra 6 SE. This 3D printer was the first launch on a Kickstarter and it gained over 4.5 million US dollars in a funding in a very short time. Being one of the most popular 3D printer manufacturer, Creality did not actually need any more funding for launching a 3D printer, but when a people pledge that huge amount of money on a campaign, it's clear that the whole thing was a huge marketing success. Now let's have a look on the specs and features of this 3D printer. The CR6 SE has a print volume of 235 by 235 by 250 mm. It has a 32-bit motherboard with a silent stepper drivers with a full-size SD card slot. It has the auto bed leveling with a pressure sensor that works very nice on any printing surface. Next there is a high res touch screen with a nice and simple interface, which is very easy to use and navigate through. Then we have an optical filament runout sensor, which will pause the printer when you run out the filament. The extruder on the CR6 SE is a geared enclosure type, which works very well with all types of filament including the flexible ones. The CR6 SE has a dual Z-axis lead screw, which are synchronized with the belt between, which makes the Z-axis very precise and stable. The print surface on the CR6 SE is a tempered glass with a special coating on which most of the filament sticks pretty well. But if you want to have a mirror finish on the bottom of your prints, you can always flip it and print straight to the glass. Thanks to the 16 points out of bed leveling, the heat bed on the CR6 SE is screwed down directly to the support plate, which rests on the wide aluminum extrusion that makes the whole heat bed very stable and solid. The power button on this printer is integrated into the frame and if we remove this bottom plate, we can see the high quality 24 volt power supply from Minwell. On the side of the frame there is a nice foldable spool holder and also this printer comes with some extra modded mods like belt tensioner for the X and Y axis, step motor covers, heat bed cable protector, isolated heat block with LED light, a very useful toolbox, carrying handle, and the last but not least, this printer have a nice and solid metal frame with a custom aluminum extrusions. Now on other hand, we have the Ender 3 Max, which doesn't have all of that bells and whistles, but it is the much bigger 3D printer and it's based on a well-proved Ender 3 design. Unlike CR6 SC, the Ender 3 Max was released much more quietly and it had pretty much the same launch like any other 3D printer from Creality. In terms of specs and features, the Ender 3 Max has a large print volume of 300 by 300 by 340 mm, which is significantly larger than the CR6 SE. This 3D printer also comes with a 32-bit motherboard, but it's a slightly downgraded as only the X and Y stepper drivers are silent. And instead of the full-size SD card slot, it used the microSD card. The print surface on the N3 Max is the same type of the tempered glass, just like on the CR6 SE. And you have the same brand 24 volt power supply. Only that the power supply is not built in the frame like on the CR6 SC, rather it's just attached on the side. Instead of the Creality redesigned gear extruder, this machine used the standard all metal extruder, which works nice, and only with a very flexible filament like the Ninja Flex, it can be a bit tricky to print with. And the 3 Max also have a filament runout sensor. And since it doesn't have the dual Z-axis like on the CR6 SC, the Creality added the anti-backlash lead screw, which helps with the Z-axis precision and stability. Next, on the Ender 3 Max print head, there is a dual cooling fence and a reserve place for optional outer bed leveling, which you can add in a future if you like. Inside the print head on the Ender 3 Max, we can find the originally Creality hot end with isolated heat block. Unlike CR6 SC, there is no touch screen on the Ender3 Max, only the standard LCD screen with a knob. The good thing about this screen, it has a much better viewing angle and it's a much more brighter than the touch screen on the CR6 SC. 
The Ender 3 Max also have the same type of the spool holder, just like on the CR6SE, and the metal frame on the Ender 3 Max is also nice and solid, but is made of the standard aluminum extrusions, rather than the custom one that we can find on the CR6SE. Now let's talk about unboxing and assembly. When it comes to unboxing, both 3D printers were well packed and secured inside of the shipping box. But thanks to the much nicer cable management, the CR6SE was much easier to unbox and take out from the package, compared to the Ender 3 Max. Because on the Ender 3 Max, both upper and lower frames are connected with the cables that you cannot unplug, so it's a bit tricky to take both frames at once, since it's a quite large 3D printer. Also, both 3D printers come with the necessary tools, nice user manual, and everything you need to start printing. But I want to mention that only CR6SE comes with a 200 grams of the PLA filament, while Ender 3 Max only guts around 50 grams out from the box. When it comes to assembly, both printers are easy to put together, as they are both like 95% pre-assembled from the factory. So you only need to install upper frame, LCD screen, spool holder, handle, and plug in the stepping motors and stop switches. Total assembly time is around 10 to 15 minutes, so both printers are beginner friendly. One tip, after assembly, don't forget to check and if needed, adjust the belts and bearing wheels on all axes. This will improve stability and precision and you will get the much better prints. And now, let's talk about the print quality and overall experience using these two 3D printers. For better comparison, I did not tune either of these printers or mess with the print settings. I just used default print profiles from each printer like everyone else will do at first. So I test out the PLA, PTG, ABS and flex filament and I print the same object on both machines using the same print settings, same slicing software and the same filament. The print quality on the CR6 SC and Ender 3 Max are both very good and very similar. First I print model of a dog that was on the SD card on both machines and both prints are looking very nice. To me they are pretty much identical and I can't tell them apart. Next I print a few 3D benches in different layer height on the CR6 SC and then on the Ender 3 Max, with exception of added print around the model. As you can see all 3D benches from both printers looks great and they are very similar almost identical in every layer height. Next, I print FDM benchmark test print on both machines, and after the close look, I found that the retraction on the CR6SC was better tuned in a print profile from the factory compared to the Ender 3 Max, which I'm sure it can be just as good with a bit of tuning. Also, some ringing on a Y-axis was more noticeable on the Ender 3 Max, which is expected because of the higher mass of the larger heated bed. But other than that, nothing major, both printers performs very good with the PLA. Next I test out the PTG filament and I print out these two impellers on both machines in a PTG and again I got very nice results. Both prints look very similar and I would say that only the print surface on the CR6 SC has just a slightly better finish with a less ringing compared to the Ender 3 Max. Other than that, both prints look great, consider that this is printed in a PTG with the default print settings. Next I want to test out the ABS filament, so I print out the same impellers once again, but this time in ABS. Thanks to the outer band leveling and the perfect first layer, the CR6 SC performs very good with the ABS as well, and the print was nice and straight with zero warping. While the Ender 3 Max performs slightly worse with ABS, because you can't always hit the perfect first layer without auto bed leveling and without the scratching the print surface. And the bottom of the print started to lift from the glass plate during the printing. So if you're planning to print with ABS on Ender 3 Max, it's better to flip the glass plate, re-level the printer and apply some glue stick for better adhesion. When it comes to flex filament, both of these printers perform pretty well. Of course the CR6 SC will be able to print a bit faster with the flex filament compared to the Ender 3 Max, because of the slightly better extruder. But as long as you keep the lower print speed, you'll be able to print with the flex filament on both machines without any issue. And now let's talk about the noise and the heat up time. 
The noise level on the both CR6 SE and ND3 Max is pretty decent and it's a pretty much the same of around 48 decibels, regardless if they are printing or not. While the heat up time on the CR6 SE was significantly faster compared to the ND3 Max. Creality did add the heat bed insulation on the ND3 Max, which is a good thing, but the CR6 SE still heats up faster, mostly because of the smaller size heated bed. Speaking of size, here is the print size comparison between these two 3D printers. These vases are printed on both machines at the maximum height, and as you can see, the ND3 Max has a significantly size advantages over the CR6 SE when it comes to the printing of bigger models. And now, the final words. Well guys, I really enjoy printing on these two 3D printers, and they both work flawlessly during all of this time. Since both printers have a very similar print quality, you won't make a mistake getting either of them. But if I really need to choose one between these two, for my everyday printer, I would choose the CR6 SE. Only because I don't print large scale prints that often, and I like having that auto bed leveling and extra features and mods. But if you're under the budget and you're looking for the good and reliable large scale 3D printer with a good print quality out from the box, then Ender 3 Max is the printer for you. Alright guys, I hope that you liked this video and found it useful. Link of these 3D printers you will find in the video description. Thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.